Hi everyone, Wonia Tebow from Buckskin Revolution and Alone Season 6 here. And this is a video that I have been meaning to make for a long time about my advice for how to apply for a loan season eight. Now, it is a little bit late in the casting process for me to be putting this out, but to be perfectly honest, I dragged my feet for a while because it was looking like there might not even be an alone season eight with the way the world has been, right? Or that the whole world might be alone season eight by the time we get to next fall. And also, of course, you know, March and April were a little distracting as the world was changing rapidly and I was doing so much to meet the challenges of these times. So here I am finally at the beginning of May to give you my advice for applying for a loan season eight and also for how to get selected should you get chosen for boot camp, which is kind of the last tier of the selection process. So, you know, there's a lot to talk about and I want to start by being frank and letting you guys know that I did not apply for season six. I was contacted by the show. So I did go through all of the, you know, procedures of submitting footage and stuff, but I came in, you know, well into the process having been contacted and kind of pre-selected. So just to be transparent that my process probably looked a little bit different than yours might. But that brings me to a good point, which is that, you know, it was through my long reputation teaching ancestral skills and being pretty well connected with a lot of the folks in that world. And even with several folks who had been on the cast before, that was part of why I was selected and definitely did a lot of the work for me. If you have it available to you, finding ways to cultivate relationship with people who are former cast members in a way that demonstrates your skill and your capacity so that they really know that and can speak to it if they're contacted by production. I've been contacted by production to ask me about different people that I know who have applied. Some of them are people who I really know their skills and their skill set, and some of them people who I just know peripherally or don't know very well. And you know, I'm gonna be honest about that and I'm gonna be in full integrity with production. I'm not gonna say that yes, you'd be a great option if I don't actually know that that's true. So not just having, you know, oh, I wrote this person an email once, but actual real knowledge-based relationships so say like taking a class that someone provides so you have you know one-on-one -on -one time over the course of a few days or a week or going to one of the skills gatherings that some of us attend and or teach at or you know other other gatherings like that definitely personal knowledge is going to be a lot better than just peripheral from online forums and social media or such, particularly because production does come to former cast members and asks if they have recommendations. And those people who are kind of vouched for by someone already known and trusted are gonna be that much further up the, up the ladder when it comes to making selections. So that's my first piece of advice, and that may or may not be something that's available to you. So moving on, I think that some of the things that a lot of people focus on in terms of their applications to a loan is their skill set, which totally matters, totally is important. So let's talk about that. And then we're going to talk about why it is really not the only thing for you to focus on. So in terms of your skill set, obviously they want to see that you have well-rounded wilderness survival skills, right? That's pretty key. Now, you can do a pretty good job of faking a lot of these skills in your videos by, you know, reading books and watching YouTube and that kind of thing. And production is getting thousands of applications my year because it was um, a year where there had been a couple seasons that were first couples and then returning people. They had three years to accumulate applications. There were 20,000 applicants. So you really need to do something to not just show that I know how to do this, I know how to do that, but really demonstrate long-term experience and real capacity, not just knowledge, but excellence at these skills. And, you know, most folks who apply know how to tie basic knots, know how to make a fire in the woods, know how to build shelter, know a lot of the basics. So something that makes you more unique. And then also, it's really easy to have a wide range of skill set in terms of survival and bushcraft and that kind of thing. But one of the big things that they are looking for is the ability to feed yourself. 
that is something that, you know, not a lot of people have done long-term trips really feeding themselves 100% from the wild. So being able to demonstrate your hunting experience, your trapping experience, your knowledge of wild edibles, all of these things are going to go a long way towards making you stand out. That is one of the main things that they're looking for. So we'll talk about that again when we get into if you make it through the first selection criteria. So one of the things that you're going to be doing in terms of your application, particularly if you get invited to move forward with it, is submitting a bunch of footage of yourself, right? So this is going to be part of your chance to really shine and show what you can do. Do something different than everyone else does. All right. So lots of people are out there with their big survival knife and their paracord and, you know, showing their stuff and showing off their gear. But part of the thing with this show is being able to do more with less. So not focusing on your gear, but focusing on your skills and knowledge. For my application videos, I did a primitive camp out where all the only tools that I brought were my knife and my axe and everything else. I was making from the landscape. So I literally made cordage out of the plants around me in order to tie up my shelter. I didn't have paracord. I didn't have, you know, a fancy multi-tool. I didn't have a lot of these things. So something like that, where you demonstrate that you can do well without the fancy tools is going to make you stand out. Also, moving on from just your skill set, something that's really going to come through in your application is your personality, right? So there are so many people who have all of these skills, but what they are looking for is not just people who have the skills, but people who are going to come across well on television. So you don't want to fake it. You don't want to make yourself be someone who you're not because they're going to see through that and you're not going to be able to maintain that if you get chosen and you're out for months in the wilderness on your own or however long you're out there. But you know, really let yourself come through and be unique, be interesting, be engaging. Have there be something about you that makes you stand out. So that, you know, in your languaging, in how you come across, in your skill set, just in whatever way you can, just making sure that you don't blend in with the crowd of all of those other survival skill and bushcraft, you know, weekend hobby nuts. <laughs> so that is a, a really huge element. And that brings us to another thing too, which is that, yes, they want people who have good skill sets. They want people who have an interesting personality and stand out from past participants. You know what else is super key to them? People who know how to film and who are comfortable being on camera, right? You can have all of the skill set in the world and a great personality. But if you either, you know, clam up in front of the camera or aren't really willing to put in the time or effort to learn how or, you know, don't seem to be cooperative with the process, they're going to make note of that. They don't have a show unless you are willing to really throw yourself into filming. So they are screening for people who are super willing and interested in and creative with their camera work. You're not allowed to edit your casting application footage. So, you know, getting into fancy editing isn't going to do anything for you. You're not going to have a chance to help edit the show. God, I wish I had had a chance to help edit the show because I wasn't psyched about all of their editing of me. But, you know, this is an area that a lot of people don't think about that, again, can make you shine. So right now, I've got two different cameras and I'm going back and forth between them, which is showing that I know, and I didn't before, mind you, this is just from having been on a loan and getting camera training, but showing that I understand how to work with multiple cameras, how to coordinate footage, you know, how to think a little bit more creatively and out of the box in terms of my cameras. So that is part of what's going to make you stand out because that is going to show them that you will give them a good show and that is huge so keep all of these things in mind by all means also wow them with your skills you know know how to make a handful of good traps be proficient with a lot of different ways of making fire know how to find food in the wilderness in a variety of forms not just trapping 
not just hunting, not just fishing, not just wild edibles, but the gamut, right? Know some good crafts that you can demonstrate. Have a interesting personality, be cooperative, willing to work with them, have good camera skills. All super key. Then we come to, if you get selected, ooh, if you get selected to go to boot camp, which is kind of the final assessment, and in my season, they brought 22 of us to boot camp to select 10 of us. So that's gonna be kind of the next level of demonstrating who you are and showing what's unique about you, really telling your story. So another thing that they really want is not just you know what you can do in the woods, but who you are, your history, your background, your motivations, your passion. Are you willing to be vulnerable and be your real self on camera? That's super key. Because again, if you're not being your real self, they know that that's gonna fall apart when you're out there on your own for a long time. So give them who you are because that's gonna demonstrate to them that you're, that you're willing to sign up for what they're looking for. Being creative and ingenuitive is an underrated survival skill. Knowing everything that is in a book or a bunch of other YouTube videos, you know, helpful, but that's not really what's gonna do it for you in a real survival situation. So find some way to demonstrate that you have a problem solving, critical thinking, creative mind. For myself, I feel like that's definitely one of my bigger skill sets and I think that that really came through and part of how it came through wasn't just in my application footage but even at boot camp I was the weirdo <laughs> and I'm sure many people will agree with this to the degree to which that I'm not sure that people necessarily thought I was gonna do great out there because I was kind of a sticky wheel sometimes and um, you know I was working on projects I was refusing to waste the food that we had out on our camp out and bringing it back to the hotel and eating that instead of the buffet and you know bringing my own homemade gear instead of the gear that most people typically think of which was like bulky and weird and frankly you know I often get stopped and searched security on airplanes because the buckskin and the baskets and it's all just a little weird but it made me stand out I didn't blend in with the crowd, so ultimately I think it really helped me. Yeah, bottom line is that what is gonna get you selected for Alone season eight or any season of Alone isn't necessarily what you think it is. It's not just your skills. It's not just what you know. It's who you are. It's your willingness to be who you are on screen in front of a bunch of people. It is your ability and your desire to learn good camera work it is being unique and you know you also better have all of the skills and know how to feed yourself in your back pocket so good luck everyone may you may you apply may you get selected and may you get this amazing opportunity to have an incredible journey my time on alone season six was some of the most enriching connective life-changing time of my life and I've had a lot of pretty intense amazing adventures so I I really I salute you for wanting to be a part of it and I hope that it goes well for you and just so you know I have a very exciting online skills event coming which could potentially be a way to get to know me and boost your skill sets um, but that is the buckskin revolution online skills gathering so this is a way for for me to bring the skills to the people who can't come to the skills right now because of the coronavirus quarantines and shutdowns and particularly less social gatherings. So all kinds of great classes, lots of things related to alone, lots of things related to resilience in challenging times, both coronavirus related in terms of health and well-being and herbal medicine and just food security and bigger picture how do we keep ourselves well when the world is suddenly getting very unpredictable so please join me for that more details on my website and a link here and uh yeah thanks for joining me and uh viva la revolution